Welcome to Roadmap, how to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week we interview a great agent who is consistently taking two, three, four listings a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. And we have an exciting guest today. We encourage you to take notes and apply as much of their knowledge as quickly as you can, and then use the copycat principle. If you're watching on Vulcan 7 or the Lead Gen Facebook group, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions during the broadcast. Get your questions in early, folks. Let me introduce my co-host from San Diego, Carly Hathaway. That's carlyhathaway.com. Hi, Carly. How's the real estate business? Hi, Ren. Hi, everybody. Um, real estate is amazing. I uh, definitely can't complain. Have you made your contacts for today? Well, I've made a few, but I'm not to my goal yet. My goal is 27 a day, so I have another hour or so to go. And another hour to go. Yeah, how yeah. is going to come down and get you. I know. <laughs> Before I introduce our guest today, I want to remind everyone we're simulcasting the show as well on the private lead gen group on Facebook. They have over 50,000 members. I think it's 51,000. Could be 52. So we have a large audience there today as well. We'll be We will be pausing. For a commercial message during the show as a thank you to the lead gen folks. Let's welcome our guest today from the greater Salt Lake area and surrounding cities, Mr. Doug Carey. How are you, Doug? I'm great, Ren. Thank you. Good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. We're excited to have you here. Good deal. Well, we hope to learn a lot and there are people watching this show that take one listing a month a half a listing a month, two listings a month, three listings a month. So any ideas you can offer will really make a nice difference. So okay. we appreciate you being here. And then we're going to open it up for questions and answers later on. So what's that? Well, first of all, there are people that they're going to get off this call and they're going to have this show and they're going to say, you know, I need to reach him because I have somebody moving to Salt Lake or I have moving from Salt Lake to my city or wants to buy a second home in Salt Lake. How do they reach you? Uh, they can call me or email me. Uh, cell phone number is 801-450-0997. Okay. Email me at doug at dougcarry.com. Great. And, uh, or they could go to dougcarry.com and uh, find you too and learn about you exactly. as well. Is that right? Correct. Okay, Doug, C-A-R-Y. That's right. Because occasionally there are other variations of that. DougCarry.com. Perfect. Good. Well, folks, here's your opportunity. Get a second home in Salt Lake. Go skiing. Yes. There we go. Thanks, Ryan. How far <laughs> do you do you handle, handle any areas where there are ski slopes? Uh, yeah, I work in a couple areas. Uh, more big cottonwood, little cottonwood canyon areas. Okay. We're like Snowbird and Alta. Okay. Oh, I like Snowbird. Also around Snow Basin, which is up near Ogden. Okay, nice. good. So, folks, get a second home. Yes. There send we your go. referrals to Doug. There you go. Send your, <laughs> yes, send them to Doug and move up there. Good deal. Well, we want to learn about what your day is like. Yeah, so, Doug, what's your goal this year? I uh, sell 75 homes. Nice. And Great. are you on track? Uh, I'm a little behind. Okay, all right. I'm it up right now. Okay, good. Well, how, what are you adjusting or changing to make it up? Uh, I've increased uh, how many contacts I'm making per day. Mm -hmm. I was averaging about 35 a day for most of the year, and I bumped that to 43 a day. That's amazing. You have great stamina, I think, on the phone, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have to switch it up a lot. to. to okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So going from 35 to 43, well, what's the time frame for that? Uh, I try and get it in before noon. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes I'm making a little bit more prospecting, whether I'm door knocking later in the day or getting back on the phone. Okay. All right. Great. So a lot of times, now sometimes you hit 43 before lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Okay. And wow. sometimes you don't. Okay. Sometimes I don't. So it's right. so somewhere right in that range. So what does that, I mean, if you hit 75 or maybe you do stretch and hit 80, what, what's that look like for you at, I mean, what kind of income is that for a real estate agent in your, in your market? Uh, that's 650000 Oh, Woo! man. A, that, we like that number. That's yeah. a good living, and you're not even <laughs> in a high-tax state. Yeah, yeah. It's a good living. That's okay, so you're, if you're, you're really hitting that many contacts, what time are you starting to get on the phone in the mornings? So I start calling about 8, 10, 
-hmm. and and then I do a role play at 8.30, from 8.30 to 9. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then from 9 till noon. And who, okay, good, good. And who are your first calls right at 8.10? Expireds, the which we don't expired. have many. Um, okay. But first I'm calling expireds and I'm calling for sell by owners and I'm calling through some a little bit older, you know, maybe the last couple of weeks of for sale by owners and expireds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Good. then after that, do you want me to go through all of them? Yeah, let's yeah. go through all of them. Yeah, how do you stack the deck? Okay, uh, so then I'll call my database, my past clients and my center of influence. I, mm -hmm. I call uh, 15 of those a day. And then I'll get on whether I'm calling just listed or just sold or absentees. And that usually fills up the rest of the day. And that does it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And then if you didn't reach your goal, you said then you go door knocking if you don't have listing appointments. Either door knocking uh, around a new listing or, or a new sale, or I'll get back on the phone and try and catch some people later in the day that I didn't catch in the morning. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sounds okay. like you have a pretty tight routine, which I think is really key, which we talk about every week, but I mean, it obviously helps you out. So yeah. this is Monday through Friday? Yes. So you enjoy the weekends or do you, or are you a seven day wonder? No, I rarely work on the weekends. Folks pay attention. Rarely, <laughs> rarely, rarely. And I, right. I know some of you out there can't say that. I can't. <laughs> if I can set a good listing appointment on a Saturday and I know I'm open, I'll go and take it. So if it's a sure thing you're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm guessing you pre-qual pretty aggressively. Oh yeah, yeah. If it's on Saturday, I, I need to. No, I'm going to, going to take it. It's essentially already signed. Yes. Okay. Good. I like it. Good deal. Good. And then, as far as role play, do you have different role play partners every day? Do you mix it up? What does that look like? Uh, I mix it up. I'm in a role play group, and so I role play with the same person every every day for one week. Okay. And then it, it changes the next week. Yeah. I think that's a good idea because you start to learn each other and you start to become friendly and then it becomes a little funny and you just yeah, figure yeah, out the reports. We don't right? spend a lot of time together. You know, one week we role play the different scripts throughout the week and then, mm. and then I get someone else. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you on one of those groups where they do use Google Hangouts and role play and, and watch each other prospect and all that? Or? Uh, I do, I do that. I prospect with uh, with one other agent on a Google Hangout every day. Oh, okay. Because I know there's somewhere they have like eight or 10 people on there and they're watching, you know, yeah. they're watching each other prospect and if one of them disappears, they're like, Charlie, hey, Charlie, where are you? <laughs> the big groups are hard for me to focus. The one other person is, well, seems to be the best for me. One's enough, huh? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. And do you have accountability partners as well? I do. Okay. Yep. I have uh, one that I talk to at, right at eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, another two people that I talk to at 1145 in the mm -hmm. morning. Uh, and then I've got two other mastermind group, two mastermind groups too, that we're always texting each other. And how do you feel like that helps you? Because I mean, does it help you stay on the calls? Like, what does it do for your business? Uh, it helps me. I mean, it helps me get back on the phone later in the day. It, it helps me when I see somebody else say, hey, I just took, you know, listing number two for the week or number three for the week. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm not there yet. Uh -huh. uh, I've got to push it. And, and you know, we report back at the end of the day how many contacts, listings, appointments we, we took or set. And... It's very motivating for me. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like it keeps you on track, keeps you motivated, competitive. In my story, I, I got to tell you, Carly, that point he made here is probably one of the most vital things in this call so far. When you, when you consider how much negative pressure there is sometimes calling and all the rejection that you get, mm -hmm. in the absence of an accountability partner, somebody that you're saying, I commit to doing this mm -hmm. over the next three hours, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this over the next, and then you report back, I mean, think how many times people go to the gym if somebody's waiting for them there yep. versus if yep. they're going on their own. You know, if we'll show up for other people more than we'll mm -hmm. show up for ourselves. So if, if a, a lot of you watching this show who don't have accountability partners and you have two of them, Doug? 
Uh, least more than that, yeah. Three or four. Three or four? Yeah. Okay, you, okay, so you've got, there's two a day, or I may have heard it that all wrong, but you're, you're surrounding yourself with accountability. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that drives it, because you'll do it versus not do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And then I think role playing really helps. And you said you role play all the scripts. What scripts do you use? So I'll role play the expired for sale by owner, some objection handlers another day, and then the listing presentation on one. I'll do it like, one day, and the other person will do it the other day. Uh huh. Who's like what listing presentation though? Like, is there um, a coach you follow or? Yeah, Mike Ferry's listing presentation. Okay, oh, okay. So, you so you're involved with Mike Ferry. Okay, yeah. great, wonderful. So you follow Mike Ferry scripts, you follow the expired scripts, Fizbo's yes, prequels. Okay. Gotcha. Perfect. Good. Okay. Good. Well, those seem to be working for a lot of people. Wonderful. Okay. Well. So we're going to ask you the toughest question of the day. Are you comfortable doing a role play? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, what should we do? Expired or Fizbo? What do you think? You want me to choose? Uh, how about an expired? Choose. Expired? Okay. Okay. I'll be expired. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, I'm looking for Carly. Speaking. Hi, Carly, my name's Doug. I'm a local real estate agent. I'm sure you know that your home came up on the computers today as an expired listing. And I was calling to see when you plan on interviewing to find the right agent with the right approach for the job of selling your home. Oh, uh, we have an agent. Oh, you have an agent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I'm curious, I saw it come off the market. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it didn't sell. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Do you still want to sell the home? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. If you had sold this, where are we looking to move to next? To Utah. To Utah? Mm -hmm. That's a great place. What's yeah. taking you to Utah? I want to snowboard more. You want to snowboard more. I don't blame yeah. you. I do too. Yeah. That's great. So when are you going to Utah? Uh, I mean, we want to get there as soon as possible, but this house has just been kind of a nightmare. It's like a monkey on our back, you know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I hear you're frustrated. Very, I'm very frustrated. Yeah. yeah, it was on the market for six months, right? It was, it was on the market for six months and there was a few showings here and there. Um, I mean, I know I have a beautiful home. I probably have the best home in the whole neighborhood. So yeah. I just, I think it can sell. I just don't know what's going on. Wow, w what do you think it was? I don't know, I honestly don't know. You don't know, mm -mm. okay. So if you could still sell the house, you absolutely still want to go and snowboard more. Definitely. Yeah, that's the goal. Definitely. Okay. Well, Carly, I called it this morning because I specialize in selling homes that didn't sell. Oh. And over the time that I've been selling real estate for 13 years, we've sold a lot of homes that didn't sell before. Okay. Oftentimes it means just getting it back on the market with a more aggressive approach. Now, are you open to professional advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah? Okay. Well, hey, I, I wouldn't mind popping by and taking a look at your home, seeing exactly why it didn't sell and what it would take to sell. I've got some time today I could swing by at 4 or at 5.30. Which would work for you? What would you do different than my agent that I worked with this last time? Yeah, that's a great question. And I don't know exactly what was done. Oh. Um, but what I do know is what it'll take to sell the home today. Uh-huh. So, so far this year, while your house was on the market for six months, I sold 20, 23 other of my listings. Wouldn't that be great? That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, why don't I pop by? No pressure. Uh, does four or 5.30 work better for you? We could do four o'clock, I guess. If you're gonna be in the neighborhood. Okay, great. And then I typically prequal right then. Okay, okay. Is, is, there time, is there ever times that you don't prequal? And then call back the next day or something or? Sometimes I always try and pre-call right then. Okay. If, uh, if the call went really long or if they're like, I don't, I gotta go now, mm -hmm. um, then I'll set something else up, but okay. I like to do it right away. How well, often think... do you do with a for sale by owner? Cause sometimes that's the trickier one. Do you, well, you pre-call immediately? Pardon? Yeah, um, I'll try and pre-call right, right away. away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. I'm going to rewatch that like 10 times. Because <laughs> you're doing a fair number for sale by owners. Do you, what do you, how do you overcome the challenge where a for sale by owner, you've got a, you're, it's Tuesday, you set an appointment for Thursday at, at four. And then as you get closer 
and you call back to reconfirm and they want to push the date off, which mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. How do you work with that? Uh, I try and get into a for sale by owner as soon as possible. Okay. So you just move fast. Oh yeah. Okay. And same with an expired. Okay. You know, I'm looking for, you know, this afternoon or right away or, um, okay. I mean, I really hate to put it out till tomorrow if I, yeah. I will, if I have to, but yeah. Okay. So you're shooting for, so if you have open slots on the day you're calling, you'll try to fill those first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. The further out I I put my appointments, the less likely they are to actually keep the appointment. Just because of the strength yeah. of the market and probably some of your competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If they open the door for me, they're going to open the door for the next person. Very true. I agree. Gotcha. So gotcha. can I ask you, what are some red flags when you're pre-qualling either expired or FISBOs, but what would make you, what are some key things that people would say that would make you not go on the listing appointment? Uh, asking about motivation, first of all, mm -hmm. if, uh, if I find out that, you know, their motivation is so low, um, and then it uh, ties into price that they're, you know, really, especially an expired, mm -hmm. the motivation is low and they're priced 100,000 over, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. Do you refer yeah. those to your competition? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got somebody else they can call. I've got somebody, but I'd like to have come over. Uh, well, they're not with your company. Well, that's the purpose. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> We're not dealing so much anymore with uh, lack of equity, but yeah. you know, that, that used to be a big thing mm -hmm. that we have to look for. Yeah. Now it's just they're kind of overpricing it. Yeah, it's price and motivation. Mm -hmm. Will you take a listing that's overpriced if they make, say they make a commitment to lower it after a certain amount of time? Yes. Uh, provided it's not crazy overpriced. Okay. So and like if they 20, have to move, Carly, if they have to move, they have to move and they have to move quickly. Yeah. If it's five, 10% overpriced, yeah. that's fine. Uh, but our market's starting to change a little bit. We're starting mm -hmm. to see some changes. So I think I'm going to have to reevaluate how overpriced yeah. I want to take something. Yeah, for sure. What's your average price point? Uh, mine's about 320. Okay. Okay. Cool. Good deal. A good price point. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. What do you do for mindset? Uh, I'm always reading books, watching YouTube videos, um, listening to stuff from my coach, from Mike Ferry, okay. from my broker. Mm -hmm. uh, so always trying to fill my mind with something good, uh, okay. writing out affirmations, writing out my goals. Oh, you do write those out. Okay. And your goals. Yep. So, and I, from what I gather, you're paying attention to your numbers quite a bit and your, your plan. Cause you knew exactly where you were on track. And yeah. so, so, cause there are a lot of people don't know they have to look, well, I think I've sold this many. <laughs> so, and okay. So can we go um, to listings? Do you send a pre-listing packet? Yes, I do all the okay. time. Yeah. Okay. What do you include? Uh, I include the comparables. I include a contract, um, a plan of action, a little track record about me, um, references. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. Okay. okay. I like it. Yeah. And I think, I think that's so helpful because a lot of agents aren't doing that. So that's going to set you apart because it's obviously going to make you look more professional. It, it does. And people are, people respect the work that you've put in already. Mm -hmm. And so I heard from somebody at, uh, at one of Mike Ferry's retreats a couple years ago, they said they try and get it out as soon as possible. And so I've tried to work at getting it a lot faster. Will mm -hmm. you send it with an Uber? Uh, <laughs> so I, I have a runner that works for me. Oh, there you go. And, and she'll come in midday and, and take anything out. That's yeah, I mean, nice. you can take it to the bank and they, with the answer to this question, I think I know what it may be, is how long, from the time you walk in the front door to the time you leave, how long is that? Um, 30 to 60 minutes. 30 to 60 minutes. Good. Which is a half the time of an average agent, as we all know. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, what's your batting average? You go to on 10, how many do you take? Um, this year, I've actually done very well. Uh, I'm at 91% right now. Wow. Whoa. Oh, That's amazing. It. That's a great batting average. 
Yeah. So I've been working on that. Last year I was 75%. Well, that's a huge jump. What, what changes have you made? It's been a big jump. Um, I've been a lot stronger on my pre-qual, making sure that I'm asking all the questions. Mm -hmm. um, in this market, I haven't been turning down or, or canceling near as many of the appointments as I used to. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'll, I'll make sure that, that I've really set them up, set them up well. Um, I've also, like I mentioned, my pre-listing package, that's been improving, making sure that I, I probably get you know, 90, 95 percent of the packages out before I go out. That's awesome. Great. If I set an appointment for that day, obviously I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I can't. And then sometimes I can't. Yeah. And then in that case, would you just bring it with you and kind of give it to them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then maybe that listing appointment takes a little bit longer, but. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. And sometimes. Okay. Half the time, people don't even look at your packet, mm -hmm. like crack it open. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the fact that you've done that work, you've mm -hmm. it, it's professional. Um, they're usually impressed by just simply the fact that you dropped something by and you did work. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And so, what percentage of your um, listings and closings come from like expired FISBOs, referrals, past clients? 50% uh, come from past clients or sphere of influence, mm -hmm. around 50. Um, and then I think it's about 20% from expireds right now. Okay. Uh, my for sale by owners aren't near, aren't as much. I'm kind of turned a corner and I'm calling those a lot better now for the last Good. month. Good. Good. We got some, a lot of questions piling up, so we got to. Uh, dive into that. Lawrence Papaleo wants to know, what do you say if you get their voicemail? You're calling and you hit voicemail. And now I'm sure that depends on if it's an expired for sale owner or a past client. So what do we know? So I don't usually leave a voicemail on expireds and buy owners unless I haven't been able to reach them for a while and I, I really want to really want it. So I think we answered uh, that. What is the most Common objection do you have? Oh, Dan Hendricks wants to know what is the most common objection you have during a listing presentation and how do you respond to it? Uh, my most common one is just the we want to think about it or wait. Okay. And and so I go through the uh, couple things. One, do you absolutely want to sell? Two, we've talked a lot about price. Are you absolutely you know, make sure they're committed to that price or that they're comfortable with the price. Mm -hmm. uh, and then three, go through the, what I'm going to do to sell the home, make sure they're comfortable with that. So, so I'll jump into my plan of action a little bit. I try not to go too in depth on that uh, and then close again. Yeah. Just keep closing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of figure out what, what is that objection there? Yeah. Yeah. Good. And then you keep closing because, uh, oh, there you go. Yep. Because people do want to be closed. You know, they're, it's a, they're testing you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can always apologize in that way, you know, just say, you know, you know, you want me to be this strong when I'm representing you. So good. Um, Jay Coates is asking, and I think he means during the prequel, uh, what is, uh, what is uh, Doug mean when he say, he says, asking all the questions. I assume that means in pre-qualification, is that right? Probably. Yeah, so I use uh, Mike Ferry's pre-qualification script. Okay. Um, there's more questions, too, that I'll ask. You know, I like to go deeper in different topics, depending on what they say. That, that questionnaire the, or the script on Mike Ferry's website is very much a, an outline. So I'll ask more as needed. Good. Mm -hmm. So that way, when you get there, you know... Because if I remember, a typical question in a prequal is going to be, you know, you know, if something along the lines of, if what I say makes sense and you're comfortable and confident that I can sell the home, do you plan to list your home with me when I come out at four o'clock? Yep. Something like that. So I mean, if they say no, now they are in a whole new conversation. Exactly. So there you go, Lawrence. I don't know how to answer how he's going to answer this, Lawrence. What <laughs> Lars Papaleo says? What is your unique selling proposition? Unique selling proposition. Uh, well, I always go to the, the the passive or the active versus passive marketing. Gotcha. And 
talk about how active I am out there, constantly looking for home, for buyers for my listings and listings for my buyers. I talk about prospecting every morning and yeah, that, that's about <laughs> usually all I have to do. Yeah. Good. Cool. Good so, I, I mean, Doug, your batting average is 91%. That's an, or 95%. I think you said at one 91. point. Yeah. Okay. How long did it take you to really internalize the script and what did it take to get you there? How much did you practice? How much did you watch videos? Like what did you do to really perfect the Mike Ferry listing presentation? Oh, I, I, I was never one to handwrite it very much. That drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I, <laughs> I chant it all the time. And I, oh, still, yeah. um, I had one of my coaches, I think for three months, months in a row, every day I had to call and leave him a message on his voicemail, chanting the listing presentation. That's incredible. And so just, yeah, just chanting that's, and then role play. I've always Role play, accountability, accountability, coaching, accountability, role play. I mean, folks. Yeah. Keep sharp, sharpen the ax and then cut down the tree. And then staying on the phone for a good two, three hours every morning. Surround yourself with accountability. Get a lot of shadow, Carly, shadow. Yeah. Yes. Do you do any shadowing, Doug? Do you ever go visit somebody else and watch them for a day? Or I know? have. Yeah. I haven't done it that much. I've done it twice. Yeah, you've done it twice. Okay. Did that make a difference? Yes. It's very impactful. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And it's good. I, I think like it's I good to, to do it more often. Yeah. And I think it's good to do it every couple of months to reinvigorate you, you know? Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. Well, this has been an exciting show. Uh, Doug, we're very, very grateful for the information. And if everybody's taking good notes, they're going to all of a sudden surround themselves with accountability and they too will take at least one listing a week, if not two. And, uh, and by golly, those paychecks, your bankers will love you folks. They will <laughs> love you. Let me read my last little thing. Uh, if you're watching on Vulcan seven and you want to get involved with the lead gen Facebook group who airs our show as well, they are at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash got objections. I want to thank Aaron Wittenstein, who runs the group. He's a real give-back guy, and he has a program called ExpiredMasteryElite.com. And finally, if you're watching on Facebook and you are not yet involved with Vulcan 7, make sure to sign up at Vulcan7.com forward slash lead gen for a very special deal. And then everybody's waiting to know what is Doug's real secret. <laughs> You've heard all this other stuff, but there's one in secret he doesn't want to share. And what he does is after he's made his 43 contacts, so a lot of times it may not be till 130, 145, he gets delicious graters, mint chocolate chip, <laughs> and enjoys it. It's the only one for listings taken. The other flavors are for buyers, but the mint chocolate chip, and you can get graters all over North America. Go to graters.com. If the listing is slow to sell, dig a hole in the front yard and bury it upside down and it will sell. It will be under contract with a pending sign right away. Yeah. Where else can you get that from your ice cream? <laughs> See you guys next week when we interview another rock star who's making a lot of money. Doug doesn't work on weekends. No weekends for Doug. Doug, thank you so much. I Thanks like, so I much, Doug. We appreciate it a lot. I think we all have some great takeaways. Thank you. See everybody next week. <laughs>